of the African continent. I say to you, like Dr. Kawunda would say, Tiende Pamozi, Tiende Pamozi, to the next program. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Caroline Katotowe of the CPD. And uh, I don't know how many of you noticed, um, but it was very appropriate as well how Dr. Kaunda seems to have influenced Ms. Katotowe in her manner of speech. She kept repeating words and phrases just like Dr. Kaunda himself. Issues and challenges. Issues and challenges. <laughs> Oh yeah, he lives in us still, doesn't he? Next, I'd like to invite Mr. Sande Musonda. Mr. Sande Musonda is the Vice President and CEO of the Kenneth Kaunda Children of Africa Foundation. Let's put our hands together as we welcome Mr. Sande Musonda. Your Excellency, Dr. Tavo Mbeki, former President of the Republic of South Africa, patron of the Tabo Mbeki Foundation, and Chancellor of the University of South Africa. Senior government officials here present, members of the Diplomatic Corps, Dr. Neo Simutani, board chair of the Center for Police Dialogue, Dr. Waza Kaunda, member of the Board of Trustees of the Kenneth Kaunda Children of Africa Foundation, my sister Caroline Katotowe, Executive Director of the Center for Police Dialogue, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, those who came who come today for the exhibition and lecture. Good evening and welcome again those who were yesterday here for the colloquium and the exhibition and have come partnering with Center for Police Dialogue will come you this evening as you bless us with your presence at the first Kenneth Kaunda Memorial Public Lecture, June 2022. It is pleasing that this evening we have gathered here from various fields of life. We have been drawn together because of our deep attention to the life and contribution of Dr. Kenneth Kaunda, Zambia's first president and founder of the Kenneth Kaunda Children of Africa Foundation. This session, a year after Keke's passing on Thursday, June 17th, 2021, is the first in an annual event that we trust will contribute a lot to human relations. As said yesterday, we in the foundation will forever be thankful for the privilege to have been physically with KK during some parts of his life and work. KK was our mentor. We cherish the experiences and lessons with him. We pledge to work with everyone, partners, who include government and the society to support the mission of Dr. Kaunda. Together, we will support the great works of this great man. Dialogue to do this event. We believe it is helpful for persons from very life and roles he played. This is an important reflection on the life, times, 
and contribution of Dr. Kaunda. We thank the presenters, speakers, and the exhibitors for the work done. We are forever indebted to speakers who have flown into Lusaka to share their close experiences of being with the President of Mozambique, gave a moving personal reflection of Dr. Kaunda's contribution to humanity. Dr. Chisano has today flown out for another engagement and wished us well in our deliberations today. While President Chisano yesterday gave the keynote speech at the first colloquium, President Timbeki will today speak to us to mark the first KK Memorial Public Lecture. President Tawambeki again, welcome to your home, sir. Yesterday, you attended the presentation of your brother, Dr. Chisano. You stayed on and listened to the local speakers right to the end. We appreciate your presence. We appreciate your presence. This reminded us of your colleague, Dr. Kenneth Kaunda, till the end. And we give thanks that this month, on June 14, 2022, Dr. Tabombeki turned 80 to the world. To all of our everyone, no one following the proceeding our own journeys and learning from the life of KK, rededicate ourselves to our required contribution in society. We greatly value your presence and support Dr. Kaunda's mission, that is the Kenneth Kaunda Children of Africa Foundation, we are engaged in various activities and programs. Government has pledged to help build a KK. This is a great contribution to humanity. In recent years, there were plans to achieve this. In October of 2020, we speeded up the efforts to make the Kenneth Kaunda Presidential Library happen and members of society, private sector. With permission from the government of the Republic of Zambia, we will be reaching out to the, for the foundation. The other important task that we have been given by Dr. Kaunda has been supporting him with his memoir project. His memoirs. To do that, he went into some reflection on his experiences and what can be shared with his various activities. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Sande Musonda, for those remarks. And also, thank you for, for your work with the foundation in keeping the legacy of our dear KK alive. And so he did mention that uh, His Excellency Dr. Tabombeki celebrated his 80th birthday this month. We're still in June, aren't we? Yes, we are, 30th of June, about two weeks ago. And uh, we all know that this was your home for, for quite a while. And so this is your family, sir. And as family does, on occasions, we gather. Um, so you could say we're also gathering for your birthday <laughs> as a, as a sub-reason. <laughs> sub it's also your birthday to celebrate your 80th birthday. And as family does on an occasion like this, I would like for us to do something together. <clears throat> now, Uncle Frank, Ambassador Frank Mutubila, handed over to me a little earlier. Allow me now to also hand over to somebody who is uh, more qualified and more skilled than I am to lead in this very short exercise that I'd like for all of us to join in 
as we indeed belatedly celebrate Dr. Tabo Mbeki's birthday. Hezron, let's give a big round of applause to Hezron Ngosa as he comes through now. So we can stand and just uh, celebrate. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Well, thank you so very much. You may take a seat. Now, the reason I'm here, that was just a warm-up. I wrote a song to celebrate Dr. Kaunda. I understand and appreciate that um, the time Dr. Kaunda was uh, president of Zambia, Nelson Mandela was incarcerated, 27 years. And I think there were children like me who was on the mind of Dr. Uh, uh, Nelson Mandela's mind when he was incarcerated. And I, I, I felt the time we lost Nelson Mandela, I should write something. And it only happened when we lost Dr. Kaunda. I said, I'm going to do this. So when I heard about this event, I called my sister and I said, I should sing this song because Dr. Kaunda and Nelson Mandela had little me in their mind when they were incarcerated and when they led the country and the uh, liberation struggle. So please stay back. The lyrics will be there. Follow through my thoughts and let's enjoy together. Thank you. I'm a little nervous, so you can clap. Yeah, yeah. Can it go under? We celebrate your life. Can it go under? We salute your struggle. Your life was a seed that bore the brunt of freedom. Your life was a seed that bore the brunt of freedom. Can it Kaunda? We celebrate your life. Can it Kaunda? I salute your struggle. Your life was a seed that bore the brunt of freedom. Your life was a seed that bore the brunt of freedom. Beyond the freedom walls, you imagined little me living in a sovereign land. Hey, your freedom you could trade. You braved those lonely nights for the brunt of freedom, yeah. yeah. One land and one nation was your cry. The dignity and peace of every child. You liberated us from the end of the oppressor and declared on us God's blessing. To Kairos, freedom reigns. Now from the waters of Zambezi, freedom reigns. And from the shocks of Zimbabwe, freedom reigns. Now from the wings of River Limpopo, freedom reigns. Freedom reigns. From the peak of Mount Kilimanjaro, freedom reigns. From the songs of Zambezi, from the songs of Ivanipopo, freedom reigns. Hear the children sing, 
Hear the children sing. Oh yeah, and it's going down. We celebrate your life. And it's going. We salute. We salute your struggle, your life. That for the brand of freedom. Your life was a seed that bore the brand of freedom. Hear you. Come on. So much. That's what uh, Dr. Kaunda loved. Tiende pamozi dimtima umozi. So as a child, that was my tribute to Dr. Kaunda. Thank you so much. Nice one, Ezra. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Indeed, as Zambia, we had the national anthem, and then we had the Kaunda anthem. And I remember every time he was at a function and was invited to stand, to speak, the moment he stood, everyone on cue just started the clap. And everyone knew what it meant. He knew what it meant. And as soon as he got to the microphone, he would wave his white hanky and break into Tiende famosi Nimtima Umo. Some of us didn't even know what that meant, but we knew it word for it and sang along. So thank you, Hezron, for bringing us those wonderful memories as well. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me now to invite Gabriel Banda to come and introduce our keynote speaker this evening, His Excellency, who will deliver the memorial lecture, the first memorial lecture on Dr. Kenneth Kaunda. Mr. Gabriel Banda, sir. Uh, greetings, good evening. It is uh, significant that uh, Dr. Tabo Mbeki is the one that was chosen to take over from Dr. Nelson Mandela, a legend of humanity, as South Africa's president. That shows the trust that people had in him and they were sure that he would move in relay to the great light, the torch of this journey of humanity in creation. Today we are honored, sir, that uh, President Mbeki is here with us to give the inaugural Kenneth Kaunda Memorial uh, Lecture. Actually, Dr. Tabo Mbeki is here in 
Lusaka back at his home and base. It was from Zambia that the ANC of South Africa was headquartered and did much work in partnership with the world to fight for the removal of apartheid in South Africa. When Dr. Mbeki was here, he had much contact with President Kaunda. One home that ANC leader, Dr. Oliver Tambo, was provided while living in Zambia was actually at State House in the premises where President Kaunda was. That time, Dr. Kaunda treated leaders of freedom movements as heads of state. For their protection, some lived at State House. Oliver Tambo lived in a house within State House grounds, and so Dr. Tabo Mbeki many times came into contact with KK uh, when Dr. Tambo was uh, working, doing some work with Dr. Oliver Tambo. So Dr. Tabo Mbeki at one time lived near, near here in Kablonga. So he knows where Livala is, he knows Kanyama, Kaunda Square, Roma, Soweto compound. He knows where they are. Even after the ANC went to South Africa in around 1990, their members still had attachment to Zambia and uh, KK. And uh, uh, the people of Zambia had been greatly supportive of the struggle in Southern Africa. And as the song was done by Ezron and uh, uh, Tatambeki, it was all Tiende Pamozi. And we also had the common anthem, Nkosi Sikeleli Africa, uh, Stand and Sing of Zambia, is linked with Nkosi Sikeleli Africa. So like many from the region, President Mbeki seems to have a sense of a womb, a womb about Lusaka and Zambia like a place where the umbilical cord was, was settled. A place that inspires, a place and a society to return to for inspiration and restoration, to refresh, for a retreat, for strength, rejuvenation, to pursue one's calling. This is the place where KK was. When they hear about Lusaka, they say, ah, oh, there is my home. When they hear about KK, they say, ah, oh, there is my team. So many persons in South Africa and the region and Africa and the world love KK. And in fact, at the first AU summit in Durban, which President Thabo Mbeki uh, chaired in 2002, they made sure they invited KK to be present at uh, that summit because of the respect and love that they have for them. So doc for Dr. Thabo Mbeki, who has been the chairperson of the AU, and actually chaired that, that summit, Lusaka is one of his more than 54 homes. He, he is a pan-Africanist. So wherever he is, is home in Africa and also in the di diaspora. Those are lessons we need to, to, to refresh ourselves in, to see ourselves as a united whole, just as the way President Thabo Mbeki and KK saw Africa and the diaspora. Dr. Thabo Mbeki promotes the innocence of Africa. He invokes Africa's strength. He has worked very, very, very hard on the NEPAD. The NEPAD project was one of his uh, brainchild. The NEPAD project seeks appropriate development processes and efforts in Africa. As with Dr. Joachim Chisano, Dr. Sam Nyoma of Namibia, Dr. Thabo Mbeki, has a deep kinship with President Kaunda. They have had a deep sense of team when with KK. They have a fellowship. They have been companions on the path of human dignity, love and peace and development. They have supported KK's programs and they, they were members of the Africa Forum, which is uh, composed of uh, retired former heads of state and they interacted a lot. And Dr. Mbeki was very supportive of the old man KK doing his memoirs. Many times when he met him, and even some of us would tell, he'd ask us, at what stage are the memoirs? So he's been very supportive of, uh, of, of, of KK, of the old man. And in that team of theirs, 
Even after the passing of Dr. Kaunda on June 17th, they seemed to move on with the torch to carry on as part of the team in which KK had been. And uh, it has been a friendship beyond physical death. As the President uh, Joachim Chisano might say, it is still continuous. They are still continuing on the path that they had, they worked together. So I, I'm also a witness to how President Mbeki approaches uh, things, approaches his work. It's very, very uh, analytical, very, very interactive. It's very thoughtful and analytical, while at the same time uh, being humble and approachable. Very, very gifted, but not pompous. <laughs> So, so he, he will listen to what you say. When you're speaking, you are, he's listening. Then he, at the same time, he definitely expresses his opinion about things around him. He will always say what his opinion uh, is about uh, something. And he's very, very thorough and works towards practical outcomes. Like KK, he dedicates himself to whatever he is doing. That's why KK used to talk about... Uh, doing something with all your strength. So when he seated, even yesterday, President Tabombeki was here throughout and people were observing, oh, he's even taking notes. He was even saying, oh, this time, this has ended here, here. The person who spoke was, was this and this person. So he's always been like that. He's using those abilities and experiences as a gift to help, uh, to help uh, society. And I'm saying he's very thorough because in 20, 16 hours in uh, the Equatorial Guinea with Dr. Kaunda as a special assistant to KK. And then uh, I, I, I was speaking to President uh, Mbeki. And uh, I spoke to Dr. Mbeki about uh, my teacher at Kamwana Secondary School, Mama Njobe, who was later on, she, she, became a, she, was, she was a freedom fighter and she was in ANC even in Parliament. And uh, so Dr. Mbeki knew the details about uh, Mama Njobe. He said, oh, at this point, she's, she's, this, she's at this stage, this stage, at this point, she's uh, unwell. And then we also talked about his home in, uh, in Zambia. And one of the homes he had, he lived at when Mama Zenele uh, Mbeki was with the uh, UNCR, was in Kablonga. Then he, he took out a book. He says, oh, no, he, he asked me for some paper. I gave him my book. Then he drew a map showing where he had lived in Kablonga at one time, Martin Luther King Road. Then he, he had the details. Oh, this is Kablonga supermarket, huh? Kablonga roundabout. Then you move like this, like this. But that's what he brings to many things that he does, details and then to see how things relate to each other, how factors relate to each other, and also the links of things from, from the past to the present and to the future. So he is a and the, uh, the first of all, for po I say this constantly exposed to President Kaunda's that I will be speaking today of an outstanding African. <laughs> a few days after press the public Kaunda, the last barely a week ago, Zambia in 97 at the military hospital in pneumonia, and he passed on on down the past to the fever, and above all, the pursuit of truth on all fronts, while vigorously fighting misinformation and disinformation, Kaunda continued to have a peaceful Rafa Balewa, Namdi Azikiwe, Julius Nyerere, Ahmed Sekuture, and others. And thus does this moving, and this brings to mind an historic process, Congresses, which start. And in this regard, we must recall the famous words in a message entitled to the nations of the world, Africa and the islands of the sea, not to speak of the brown and yellow myriads elsewhere. We are bound to have a great influence upon the world in the future by reason of sheer numbers and physical contact. 
Unquote. I've been talking about words spoken by Africans in 1900, which provided the frame basis on which Kenneth Kaunda and his peers stood as they engaged in political struggle 50 years later in the 1950s. And some of KK's peers mentioned in the obituary we have just cited, like the great Kwame Nkrumah, participated in the very important 1945 Fifth Pan-African Congress. And the importance of that Congress derives in particular from the assertion that is correctly made that first those who gathered in Manchester, England in 1945 in that year's Pan-African Congress were legitimate successor to the men and women of African blood who had convened in London, England in 1900. And second, that many of those, those who went from the Congress, that's the Fifth Pan-African Congress, they moved, moved from that Congress straight into the battles which led to the liberation, for instance, of Ghana in 1957 and the gradual accomplishment of the goal set in 1900 when that year's Congress said the oppressed of the world, including the Africans, are bound to have a great influence upon the world in future. And the marching orders issued by the 1945 Fifth Pan-African Congress were contained in a clarion call entitled The Challenge to the colonial powers. His Excellency Dr. Thabo Mbeki, former president of South Africa, with a public lecture at the Kenneth Kaunda Memorial Lecture at the Mulungushi International Conference uh, Center. The memorial lecture is expected to be addressed by His, His Excellency Mr. Haka Nehichinema later during this very occasion. ZNBC will continue the broadcast, but for now, will break for the news and revert to the Kenneth Kaunda Memorial Lecture afterwards. Stay with us. We want the right to earn a decent living, the right to express our thoughts and emotions, to adopt and create forms of beauty, we demand for black Africa autonomy and independence so far and no further than it is possible in this one world for groups and peoples to rule themselves subject to inevitable world unity and federation. And it said we are not ashamed to have been an age-long patient people. We continue willingly to sacrifice and strive but we are unwilling to starve any longer while doing the world's drudgery in order to support, by our poverty and ignorance, a false aristocracy and a discredited imperialism. And it said we condom condemn the monopoly of capital and the rule of private wealth and industry for private profit alone. We welcome economic democracy as the only real democracy, and therefore we shall complain, appeal, and arraign. <coughs> we'll make the world listen to the facts of our condition. We'll fight in every way we can for freedom, for democracy, and social betterment. I'd like to believe that all of us will have heard the voice of the young Kenneth David Kaunda as we listened to what the Fifth Pan-African Congress said in 1945 in its challenge to the colonial powers. I'm talking here about Kenneth Kaunda as he played a leading role in the historic organizations of the Zambian struggle for liberation from colonial rule the Northern Rhodesia African National Congress, the Zambian African National Congress, and the United National Independence Party, UNIP, 
and led the Cha 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 Civil Disobedience Campaign. It is an established fact, historical fact, that the struggle for the total liberation of Africa from colonialism and apartheid <coughs> was hardest in our region of Southern Africa and, of course, in Algeria and Kenya as well. The reason for this is easy to identify. It is simply settler colonialism. As all of us know, there was a large settler French settler population in Algeria, which then left Algeria as the French government considered to the demand of the Algerian people, led by the FLN, for independence. And though it was not expelled by liberated Algeria, the French settler population fled back to France because it feared the wrath of the Algerian people, having waged a brutal war against them to perpetuate colonial domination. In Kenya, the Mau Mau also... One Zambia, one Zambia, one nation, one nation. <laughs>
Mufulira College of Nursing and Midwifery, 0954-812039. Ron College of Nursing and Midwifery, 0963-407788. Henry was stopped at the border by immigration officials with his child. He was told that the reason for not being allowed to cross with the child was because he didn't carry with him his child's birth certificate. A birth certificate is a very important document which shows what your names are, when you were born, where you were born and who your parents are. This certificate is required throughout your life. When you register for grade 1, when applying for a national registration card or passport, when entering college or university, or when applying for a visa to travel for purpose of work or stay in another country. Attach original record of birth or under five clinic card. Attach photocopies of parents and or informats NRSs. Then submit the documents to the registrar of birth at the district registration office. This message is brought to you by the Government of the Republic of Zambia through the Department of National Registration, Passport and Citizenship in the Ministry of Home Affairs with support from UNICEF. There's an old saying that an idle mind is a devil's workshop. No bomb guys who you. I don't mind there is some time change And so to improve himself, he decided to learn a little kung fu. Oh, but he soon realized that to be the best, one had to endure the worst. <laughs> Alali Trena No Kutrena No Kutrena Until one day You are ready <laughs> And so began the legend of Kung Fu Banda. Kung Fu Energy, master the power. Now in a new look with Baba Mubuyu plus Moringa flavor. The Zambia Statistics Agency will this year conduct the census across the country. The census aims to count people in households, rural and urban, hospitals, military, police and correctional facilities. This numbering will extend to hotels, farms, as well as high density areas with different families sharing a house and those in transitory locations. Every person in the country matters and should be counted because the census will benefit all from migrants, refugees and street children, homeless people, the young and the old people as well as persons with disabilities. Everyone counts. This message is brought to you by the Zambia Statistics Agency.